Hello, I'm James, and this is JG3 Reviews, where I share with you my favorite fountain pens that I've come across and my non-favorites. I actually just share with you a lot of fountain pens, don't I? And so, <laughs> and a lot of stuff related to them. So today I've got another one, and this is a Hongdian 525. You know, if you're a fan of the channel, that I like the Hongdian uh, Black Forest pen and just gave away the Light of Hope blue one. Well, I months ago, months ago, I was shopping around and I found this 525, which is totally different style. And I wondered, could it be as good? Uh, the nib on, on both of those Forest Series pens, that's fantastic. And the fine nib, I can't speak for all their nibs, but I know those are good. I wondered if the Mini Fude could be as good. And so I was looking for that. And then I wondered, well, is it possible that this design is as well made and put together as the other? So I bit. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Well, why would I tell you now? You're going to have to watch the rest of the video to find that out. Let's flip this thing and look it over. Okay, so this is the Hongdian 525. And as you can see, it is quite different from the Forest series, if that's your only exposure to Hongdian, which for me was until I saw this pen one night uh, months ago uh, as I was browsing through eBay, I think it was. And this particular pen caught my eye first because it comes in blue, green, which is here, and a uh, brown color. And what caught my eye was the blue one because, it, and you may think that's it back there, but that is not. Notice the clip now, right? The blue one is very similar in color to this blue Lamy Studio, which is just one of my favorite pens. And... Uh, so that, that caught my eye. It's really not a copy. They're, they're very different in their dimensions and in their styles, and, and they certainly wouldn't be compared to each other anyway. Uh, just completely different pens. But the finish is really similar, and that's what caught my eye because I like the finish of the Studio pens. This does have, of course, some different characteristics to it overall. So let's take a look at it. First huge difference between those two would be that clip. And I think this is a nice, simple but good looking clip, very sturdy and better than better looking than just, you know, your typical stamped clip, folded clip. And yet, I mean, that's what it is, but it, it looks better than so many of them. And it is quite sturdy. It has the Hongdian logo at the end of the clip. And it's nicely polished, except for all of my thumbprints. And then you get the rest of the cap. You have a chromed finial at the top and at the bottom of the barrel, slightly different, uh, just a little bit different in their their shape and style, as you can see. But really, just a, a very simple look, but it's it's nice. I think most of what they want you to see in these pens and the colors they have is the color and that matte finish, which seems to be done very well. I think it's. Uh, I'm curious to see how it holds up over time because, and it's same same with the Lamy for that matter. I'm just kind of curious, especially if you if you write with it posted, you know the wear on that. But so far so good. There have been no flaws and no issues on the back of the cap. It does have Hongdian and five two five. In case you forget what you're writing with, which is more possible than you might think. <laughs> Those with, the, as pens accumulate, it seems to happen more and more. You know what I mean? So take the cap off and <clears throat> let's take a look first at that nib. And I'll also put specifications up when we check out the nib. But this is again a mini Fude nib, sometimes called an extra fine Fude. And as you can see, there is some nice work on the nib, nice decoration of the nib. See if I can get that just a little bit clearer for you. There you go. My lighting's coming from too many places today. A little hard to see. But nicely done nib. One of the things that appeals to me about uh, the pen is also the way that they have uh, treated the metal on the section. So we're definitely going to pay attention to that in a second. There's that Fude nib. And this is not, this is why I say it's a mini Fude. There's not a lot of bend there, just a little bit. But it writes nicely, as you'll see. And it's nice that they had this as an option. So let's look at that grip section for a second. 
It's a metal section. For some of you, that means you're already going, ah, another metal section. I don't like it. But it does have a very nice appearance, and it has a, uh, oh, I forget what the word is. It almost, it's kind of cool because it almost looks like uh, it's frosted, like there's frozen condensation on on the metal section. And it's really cool look. They've done a great job on it. But it's also helpful in the slipperiness, sorry about the band-aid, the slipperiness of a metal section. So it's not as slippery as, say, actually, that Lamy Studio, which is just a polished chromed section. So I, I like I really like the look of it. And I do think that it does help some with, with grip and slip. So that's that's kind of cool. I like it. So you take this off and true to form, it comes with a converter and that is always a great thing. Just, you know, standard run of the mill converter, but it's there and that I always, always like. And uh, I have this one already filled with some, some green ink. I believe this is Pelican uh, dark green, I think, I think. I also, I, I, I'm supposed to be writing these things down when I fill the pen so that I can keep a list and all of that kind of stuff. But some, I lost track after 53 or 54 uh, inked pens, and I was trying not to ink so many, and so I stopped writing them down so it wouldn't look so bad. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> I, I forgot to keep writing them down. And so every now and then I come across a pen and go, now what was that again? And unfortunately, that was this one today. But I'm pretty sure I compared it with another pen that I know is Pelican Dark Green, and I'm pretty sure that's what is in this pen. We'll see that in the test, too. But overall, a nicely done pen. It seems well made. It's sturdy. The fit and finish is quite good. This finish is really, really nice. And as I said, so is uh, the frosting on that metal section. I just, I really like it. So, uh, that is what I have on the design of the pen. As far as the design goes on things I like and don't like, there's nothing that just jumps out at me with this pen that I look at it and think, no, nah, I don't like that at all. Uh, there's nothing about its construction that concerns me uh, right here at the beginning. Now, you know, durability over the long term of this finish, there's no way for me to know. Uh, it's not overly cheaply done, so I expect that it's going to hold up well. Uh, but as I said, that's an unknown, but nothing, it, there's, there's nothing offensive to the design. It's a nice, simple, classic fountain pen design. And I've had experience, uh, now with a few of their nibs, their nibs are usually quite good. Uh, I would say that, uh, I think my fine on the, uh, black forest pen back there and equally good on, on the blue one. Those are top of the rung for Hongdian nibs to me in what I've tried so far. Uh, I like this one. It's a good food day. I, I do like those finds. They're just there's there's a smoothness to them that's impressive, especially for the price. Uh, but this is 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 good too. So let's take a moment to do a writing sample so that you can see that for yourself. Okay, so this is on this uh, Vietnamese paper that I reviewed not too long ago. This is the Hongdian. 525 and this is Pelican Dark Green Dunkelgrün I guess And as I mentioned, this is a, uh, a mini food A. And I like it. Uh, as I mentioned, maybe you can see that nib a little bit. Well, probably not. My lighting is just funny today. And as you can see, this is a quiet writer. This is not a scratchy pen at all. Uh, as I mentioned, so different angles of attack uh, give you different things. So if I hold the pen kind of high, maybe a 60 degree angle, then you get something, wow, that's an awkward angle for me. It's not quite as smooth there, 
Then, uh, this is my typical writing, writing angle, and you get some good variation there. Or, if you will hold it, it's kind of hard to show on this camera, uh, or from this view, down a bit lower, maybe a 30 degree, then you get a wider line. So, <clears throat> let me show you this way. So this is high, regular, and about 30. At 30, you start to get kind of like a felt tip pin width. And so it gives you that, uh, that variation. Now you can even do reverse, but I always forget to do the reverse writing. It would be an extra, extra fine. It's not overly smooth, but you know, it's not horrible. Maybe pencil-like. I, mean, I wouldn't do it, but uh, some of you do like to have that, so th there you go. And it just gives kind of a little extra dimension to some of your writing. You can't always tell all that much. I like the, I like the thickness of this. My favorite is still the Bobby Nib Fude, which is is not as many as this one. Uh, it's a, it's a got more bend to it, a little bit more surface, and a little bit more variation. So that's still my favorite. You can look that review up. I'll put a link to it here. But this is, is it a good mini Fude? Yeah, it is. It's it's got a good smoothness. Now it's not buttery smooth. I think the Bobby one is smoother. Um, it's not. I'm gonna give you likes and dislikes. It is probably, I, I do have to concentrate a little bit more to get just the right angle to get the mo coax the most variety uh, of line width out of this one than with that bobby nib, which I would kind of consider the standard of inexpensive Fude nibs. And that bobby pen, which is a Jinhao 51A, uh, is probably about uh, a little more than that, maybe 60% the price of this pen. So, but now this is it's a totally different style. This is a metal pen with a really nice matte finish. I think you get what you're paying for out of this pen. Uh, there are definitely pens that cost much more than this that are not any better made than this. Uh, it's a nice pen. It, it strikes a nice style. The colors uh, I haven't seen the brown in person, but the blue and the green are quite nice. The blue very, very similar to that Lamy blue that I showed you. And so, uh, you know, do I would I recommend this pen? I think if you're looking for a mini Fude and you want the style of this pen, or they do have fine, medium, extra fine. Okay, they do. They have fine, medium, and extra fine, normal nibs as well. Or if you just want that that excellent Hong Dion fine nib go for it. I think it's a good pen. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I really do like the pen. I like the style. It's well made. It writes well. Um, it did not dry out. when I, I haven't written with it in a couple of weeks, and I got it out today to do this review, and I, I wanted to see if it was dried out. Wrote like a charm right out. So no problems there. Did not have to wet the nib or anything. It just wrote. So that's always a plus. So I think it's good. It's a well-balanced pen. It's gonna. It, it weighs like a metal pen. If you're familiar with the uh, the Lamy Studio, it's similar in weight and size, but it's a thinner pen, um, probably a little bit lighter. Uh, check the specs for that. But let me show you size comparisons because I think you've gotten the idea that I, I think it's a, a nice pen. Well, uh, first, here it is compared to the uh, the Hongdian Black Forest. I really would have thought that the Black Forest was longer, but you know, not enough to bother. Just itty bitty bit longer, it is thicker. So uh, that's what I mean by this being a thinner pen maybe than it first looks because this is not a, an overly thick pen. Here it is next to a Pilot Metropolitan. Very similar in size in terms of length, just nearly the same length, and uh, skinnier. So if you consider, uh, if I were shopping it next to this, would I consider them comparable? I think I would, especially if this was in that fine nib, and that fine nib is as good as the one in this pen. I definitely would. And uh, 
then you know the price is not that different the, the metropolitan is more you know three to five dollars more depending on where you get it uh maybe more than that because i'm i'm not sure but i paid much more than 11 for this so it might be even eight or nine dollars more but uh the step down not everybody likes the step down on the metropolitan you don't have that on this pen in that way this one's more comfortable of course pilot has quite a reputation behind it and good nibs and all that good stuff the Lamy, I wouldn't cross shop these at all. Uh, but if you're wanting a pen that kind of looks, you know, in that style, but it's not a copy at all, uh, then, you know, you like this style, but you don't really want to, maybe you don't like the clip. Maybe you like the style of the pen, but not the clip. Well, then now you're talking options. You can get it without the clip. I like the clip. Uh, I like that propeller clip that's on the Lamy. But it's, it's very similar in size, except that this is a bigger pen with a smoother, uh, chrome section and, and a heavier pen, a more substantial pen. But there you go. I think it's good. I think it's it's definitely uh, a fair price that they're asking for the pen. And I've enjoyed it. And that's that's what I'm looking for in a pen. It looks good. It writes well. And, and I enjoy the pen. So there you are. And it gave me a color that was totally different. Nothing else in my collection looks like that. So that was also Pretty cool. That's that's my mom's favorite color right there. So there you go. Okay, have a great week. God bless you. I hope that you're doing well. And join us again next time. Like, share, subscribe, pass on the video to a friend that you might be wanting to help get into fountain pens. Have a great week.